Okay, so lesson 17.1. 17.1 contains like the base for the entire chapter of uh, 17. Firstly, we're going to start with spontaneous processes. What is a spontaneous process? A spontaneous process is characterized by two things. It continues going without any outside intervention, and it can only occur in one direction. Triggers are not considered intervention because they only start the reaction and don't follow the entire way through. Some examples of spontaneous reactions include the rusting of iron, which is a chemical reaction that occurs without any outside intervention, and the melting of ice, which is a physical reaction that also occurs without any external intervention. For non-spontaneous processes, it can be anything that requires an addition of energy throughout the entire process, such as the electrolysis of water, which requires constant electric energy to occur, and the process of photosynthesis, which requires constant solar energy to occur. Non-spontaneous uh, processes are characterized by the fact that if the energy source is removed, the entire reaction will stop. Take, uh, for example, an, an ideal gas stuck in one part of this contraption. When the valve is opened, the gas particles will spread out into the other container and the reaction will not be reversed in any way. This reaction is, this process is considered spontaneous. Note that the opening of the valve is considered a trigger and not constant intervention. Another huge part of this chapter is thermodynamics. We're going to be hearing a lot about it, so what is it? Thermodynamics is the study of all energy in matter. It allows us to predict whether a process will occur, but keep in mind that thermodynamics only is only interested in the start of the reaction and the end components. The three main terms you're going to be hearing throughout this chapter are enthalpy, which is the energy exchange denoted by the symbol delta H, entropy, which is defined as the amount of randomness defined by, denoted by the symbol S, and spontaneity, which we have already taken above. Enthalpy, or also, this is also characterized as heat change, is the amount of heat absorbed or given off by a system. The uh, most, the common uh, terms you're going to be hearing regarding entropy and enthalpy are of the universe, of surrounding, and of system. A system is the contained reaction with no nothing else. Surrounding would be anything outside of the reaction, and universe would be both reaction and surrounding. Note that system and reaction are the same thing, just uh, said in different ways. The first law of thermodynamics, uh, also known as the law of conservation, conservation of energy, states that energy cannot be created or destroyed. This law comes with its own set of formulas, which, are all, which all revolve around delta H. So delta H, the first one being delta H of the universe is always going to be equal to delta H of the system and delta H of the surrounding. Delta H of the universe is always equal to zero because energy is constant throughout the universe. And the uh, resulting the resulting equation from combining these two would be that delta H of the system is equal to delta H of the surrounding. Another, another law would be that delta H of the system is equal to the sum of the H values of the products minus the sum of the H value of the reactants multiplied by the number of moles. We are going to be going more in depth into this in the second lesson of this chapter. Okay, so endothermic and exothermic are also terms you're going to be hearing a lot throughout this uh, chapter. An endothermic reaction is a reaction that absorbs heat. Therefore, it's delta H is always going to be greater than zero or positive. Exothermic reactions release heat into the environment, so their delta H is going to be less than zero or negative. Note that delta H does not quite determine whether a reaction is spontaneous or not, but uh, as we will see here, that exotherm exothermic reactions are actually more likely, but not guaranteed, to be spontaneous. It is also possible for an endothermic reaction to be spontaneous, 
but it is not quite guaranteed and it's less likely. So the second part of this lesson would be entropy. Entropy is characterized as or defined as the measure of molecular randomness or disorder. What does that mean exactly? So the number of arrangements that could possibly exist that defines entropy. So micro, uh, microscopic states, also known as microstates, are all the possible ways for something to exist. Take, for example, this contraption. When we open the valve that connects these two bulbs, we, it will result in these formations, one of these formations. Therefore, this has an, uh, a higher entropy value than this formation. The second particle to go in will result in even more randomness. Uh, resulting in six different possible states. So, what can cause entropy to increase? There are many factors that can cause entropy to increase. Things we are going to cover in these lessons are the state of matter, where gas has more entropy than liquid, liquid has more entropy than solids. Uh, okay, so also the greater number of moles of gas in the products results in higher entropy. An increase in temperature, pressure, or a decrease in volume for gases also results in an increase of entropy. Solids are naturally more arranged than gases, therefore resulting in them having less entropy than uh, higher states of matter. Uh, okay, so in this problem, they ask you to find the delta H of the following reaction, and then tell whether it is exo or endothermic. Usually in the test, they will give you the reaction followed by the delta H values of each component of said reaction. Note that the delta H value of pure elements, such as oxygen and carbon in this example, will always be equal to zero. So for this type of question, we have to use the formula of delta H of the system is equal to the sum of the uh, h value of the products multiplied by the number of moles minus the sum of the h value of the reactants multiplied by the number of moles so considering we have one compound reactant and one compound uh, product we all, all we have to do is find the H value of H2, which is mentioned here, as negative 241.82. Multiply that by the number of moles, which is 2 in this case, and subtract the H value of CH4, which is mentioned here as minus 74.81. Uh, if we put that in our calculators, we will get the answer 408.83, and the unit here would be kilojoule per mole. So kilojoule per mole. So looking uh, back to what we said earlier, we can s we know that the delta H value of an endothermic reaction of an exothermic reaction will always be less than zero or in other terms it will always be negative so if we take a look over here so here we can tell that this reaction has a delta h value of negative 408.83 kilojoules per mole and the Reaction is exothermic. Okay, so in this question, it asks which of the following has greater entropy? Solid CO2 or liquid CO2? Uh, earlier that solids have less entropy than liquid, so we can instantly say that this one is less. 
the other uh, part B says N2 gas at 1 a at 1 ATM or N2 gas at 0 0.01 ATM. Since both of these are gases, we can uh, we know that an increase in pressure decreases entropy. So gas at 1 ATM has uh, less entropy than gas at 0 0.01 ATM. Question 2 says, predict the entropy change in the following reactions. Solid sugar getting dissolved in water. So dissolving increases the, uh, increases the possible arrangements for the sugar molecules meaning that the delta S in this case will be greater than zero. Part B asks, water vapor condenses on a cold glass of water. Since it is going from gas, which is water vapor, it condenses to a liquid. Liquids have less entropy, so the delta S value will be less than zero or negative. That'll be it for lesson 17.1, spontaneous processes and entropy. If you have any questions or want to ask anything at all, you can ask it down below in the comments section or on the server. Uh, if you want more videos like this, you can go in the channel, you can find uh, other subjects as well. And yeah, enjoy them.